Okay, welcome everybody. Chris Petri here. We're having another fun time. We're going to do some drawing, pen drawing. I was uh, looking through some of my um, sketchbooks here. And I always mention it's great to have sketchbooks if you can. You pick up a couple. Maybe you have two or three you pick up. Um, these are great Strathmore sketchbooks. This is a um, great, it's got a, um, it's a four, um, 5.5 by 8.5, so f about five and a half inches by eight and a half inches, um, 14 centimeters by 21 centimeters. Um, you know, sketching paper, spiral bound, which is great. It stays really good as far as, you know, being able to open and close this. It, it works out great if you have your spiral bound uh, spine on this. And uh, uh, how many sheets do we have on this? Let me see if it has it on here. Hundred sheets. I was looking for small writing, but it's actually right there. Hundred sheets. And I used to buy like two or three at a time. I'd buy the larger ones too, like the eight, you know, eight by ten and twelve by sixteen. And I'd leave one in the car, um, one at my house, maybe one at my uh, sister's house. If we would go visiting, I'd do a little sketching over there. And I'd always have pens and pencils also in my car at other locations and as well as at home. So this way, like I said, if you're getting in your 10 or 15 minutes every day, this is how you do it. If you, you know, if you don't want to go out and buy these, you figure, you know, maybe you don't know if you're going to stick with drawing or not. Not a big deal. You can just grab printer paper and just have printer paper with you all the time. Keep it with you. Um, you know, keep some in your car, maybe a clipboard and some printer paper and a pen or a pencil and, you, and you're set. You can do your 10 or 15 minutes every day real easy. So this is my, I was looking at, this is the paint, uh, drawing we're going to do, a pen drawing. This is um, a beautiful vase with some flowers and some napkins. And this is in a, um, a restaurant, the Roger Sherman Inn in uh, New Canaan, Connecticut. This was, um, I used to stay there when I was going to water, uh, Charles uh, Reed watercolor workshops um, years back. And um, so whenever I would stay there, it was just phenomenal. They had great food there. They have awesome food there. The comfortable rooms, it's right 10 minutes away from the art center, the Silver Mine Art Center, which is a great art center in Connecticut. I hope some of you probably know of it and have gone there. Maybe some of you attend uh, classes there and workshops there on, on a regular basis. It's a great uh, resource too as well. And um, so I remember drawing this uh, when I was having dinner, uh, wait, uh, waiting for my dinner. I started doing a sketch, 5, 10 minutes, uh, 15 minutes. And uh, looks pretty good, so we'll do this here. And then these are this again the sketchbooks I keep. And then here's some a few sketches people mentioned in the comment section. They'd like to see some of my sketchbooks things. So this is um, a pair of glasses, my glasses. I just set them down on the table and drew those one day when I was having lunch or something. And a couple of uh, figure drawings, uh, portrait drawings. And then what else do we have here? We could just surf around a little bit here. Uh, here's a nice uh, vase and flowers. This was at my house. Um, so I have the vase on the lower half and the flowers up top. Real fun, pencil, loose. Just started a, started drawing some flowers and just kept going and doing a contour drawing where you just start in one place and start drawing your flowers out and, and um, had a lot of fun doing that. that. I remember doing that drawing a number of years ago. And then some other apples and pear, an apple, a pear, and a uh, measuring cup. So these are the things you can do. Real simple, right? You know, you put down an apple, a pear, a measuring cup from the kitchen, and you just do a pencil drawing of it. It takes you 10, 15 minutes, maybe even 20 minutes, and then you're good for the day. You have your 10 or 15 minutes in. That's all you're looking for is 10 or 15 minutes every day, and then you'll really pick up a lot of um, steam with that. And, you know, a couple more things here. I think I did the same thing, a pear, an apple. And the uh, measuring cup, I think I just did it a little differently without any shading or anything. And a co coffee mug and an apple. Then I got a little sophisticated here and I did a um, drawing that was in one of my art books. It looks like this is a um, some sort of, uh, uh, maybe this might be an ex like an um, inventor's table with some instruments and things. I can't quite tell what that is right now. It might be for making 
and creating different maybe leather products or something. I can't tell. Maybe someone will leave a comment in the comment section. Someone might recognize what this is. I can't remember what this actually was, but it sort of looks like a, a table for um, someone that's like uh, working with, um, I don't know, probably leather, maybe, maybe metal. Not sure. And then we had an apple here and a scissors. And then I had another try at that there, an apple and scissors and a, again, another measuring cup. So again, have fun with these, your sketchbooks, you even just use paper, any old paper works. So <clears throat> on this here drawing, we're going to basically take the concept that we're going to recreate the same size drawing right here. So I'm going to create my rectangle, just the same size. So I'll take my pen and say, okay, where's the, okay, the bottom is here. So then I'll go across like this. How far over is this? How wide is this? Well, I just have to simply sit my pen down on there and say, oh, it's, it's right to this line here. So I come over to here, put my finger there and say, that's where that is. Like that. And then I have my other, I have my width for the bottom of my rectangle. Then I say to myself, where is the top? Oh, it's about the, it's the same size as the pen. Great. Simple enough. Put it there. Put my finger there, just like that. And we have our rectangle, same size as this. Now we can do the same idea. We can transfer over this vase and these flowers and these napkins on this table straight across over here. So we can just say, okay, where's the top of the table? About here. So I put my finger there, put a little hash mark there, and we'll just do a nice tabletop here. And we'll go across here. I can see there's like a, an indentation, like a, a finely uh, carved uh, notch in this table. So it's a fancy table, nice uh, table you might see in a fancy restaurant where they stage their um, silverware and napkins and they might have a vase or something on there. Maybe some coffee or some urns and things. All right, so now we have this. That's pretty simple enough to transfer over. We have our table. Then we say, all right, let's see where our vase is here. Let's center, our, say our center of the vase is there. How far over? About here. So I'll just take my pen and go over here, line it up. Let me try that one more time. Let me do, let me do it this way. Okay, it's right where this ridge is in the pen. That's where the center of the vase is. So I just come over here and say, okay, that's the center of the vase right here. Like that. Okay. Now I have the center of my vase. How wide's my vase? Um, at the base here, it's actually right to here. So I'm just going to take this, transfer it over, center about there. Like that. Okay. And then we'll just start our drawing. There we go. Okay. That's the vase, the bottom of the vase. And then there's a... This portion here, which is a small, almost uh, like a round ring at the bottom of the vase that sits on top of the pedestal. And then it cups up and it makes a cup shape, so like a bowl shape. So let's do that. Let's do the bowl shape here. So I'm just going to start to look and see, all right, there's the bowl shape we just did. And there's another um, ornate uh, feature on the vase. And then we come up here. So now it's to the point where I'm sort of getting the feel. I can sort of, since we have some of the scale already, I'm feeling pretty good. And there we go. Now, we're going to go up here like so. the very top of the vase with some more ornate uh, details on the, the vase. And then 
There's some ornate. Like this. And there's some more. Almost just like having fun here and there's some design to the vase. So, so far we're looking pretty good. How did we do with our height on the vase? Let's take a look. Yeah, we did pretty good. We're close to the same height. You know, if things aren't perfect, don't worry about it. And you wouldn't want to probably scale everything as you go. Once you get started, then you can kind of feel your way and look and say, okay, yeah, that looks about right. You know, maybe I made this a little too large here. It's a little bit smaller there. So I was a little larger on my vase, but that doesn't really matter. That's okay. As long as you're not way off. Like if your vase is up here, does that make sense? If your top of your vase is up here as you're drawing, well then you know, wow, I, I went way off. And when you're using pen, it, pen kind of forces you to do it um, pretty accurately. So that's why when you're doing it with pen, when you have a pencil drawing, you can kind of erase a few times here and there. But the point is to try to just go for it, use the pen. I think the pen puts a little bit of pressure on us, with, on us with, which is good because then it's kind of like it forces you to say, hey, let me double check things here as I'm going. So that's what I did. I kind of double check things. I'm pretty close. And then now as we do the flowers, these are a little more fun to do. I'm just going to try to kind of follow what I see here. And again, I'm not looking for perfection. I'm seeing a little bit of the uh, different flowers that are on the uh, vase here. This comes up and there's another couple of lighter flower shapes that have some fine uh, features on them. And then here we have things start to come up and we have taller um, stems that come up with flowers on the end of the stems and you can kind of have a fun time with this and, and maybe I'll do mine a little different. And this is how we did this in the restaurant when I was waiting for my dinner, my appetizer, whatever it was. I sort of just, you know, said let me take this opportunity to start practicing some more of my sketchbook which I'm always trying to do to get better at my drawing skills. And then we just went ahead and I did this and, and there's some more of those flowers with the fine features over here too. So I think this looks pretty good. We are very close to what we have here. can add a little bit of uh, fancy curves and lines like this maybe for just to make it look a little more uh, ornate and a little more <clears throat> you know have a little more pizzazz to this but this looks pretty good I think we have done a good job here so this is part of the sketching and we're doing this again 15 minutes so this video is going to be just quick we're going to do our 15 minutes maybe 20 minutes at most by the time we're completed here so let's keep going Let's do our uh, napkins over here. So our napkins are over here. And we just do those pretty. And then I think over here, there's some curves in them. So this is where they're folded. Like that. All right. This is really looking good. So you can see we've matched this pretty good. You know, see you're doing good back at home in your studio, your kitchen, your living room, your bedroom, wherever you're working at. I'm sure you're doing a good job at this and you really have some good looking lines and ornate details and good flower shapes. And, but the fun of it is of course using the pen so we're not going to be racing every couple minutes. Let's try to just, just go for it. You know, we started out, remember, scaling things. So let's, let's start off and get our, at least up to our vase, close to what's over here. And again, we drew the rectangle the same. 
And then from there, you can do a little more loose uh, work with the flowers, you know. Um, I think those of you that really enjoy flowers, then you're really going to have a fun time with this drawing because you'll ha get to really have a good time with the curves, the shapes, the lines of the flowers, the minute details. And then we're going to do some background too. There was some really beautiful um, wallpaper on the wall behind the flowers at this table. It's a server's table, I'm pretty sure, and they have some beautiful wallpaper on the wall where this is. So it was like kind of, fo it had like some foil to it or something and really fine of uh, parallel lines, uh, horizontal lines like this. So if we can capture that in the painting, uh, in this drawing, pen drawing, that's gonna look really good. So I'm using the side of my pen. Notice that when I'm using the side of my pen here, I'm kind of keeping it on a really low angle like this. Like I'm not using it like, like a pen, like we're doing the drawing. I turn the pen down like this and hold it really like at a steep angle like this. And then you can get those light lines with your pen because you're using like only a small portion of the point of the pen, if that makes sense. And then that's, you can just get those lines in quickly, efficiently. You know, we're not going to spend uh, six hours with a ruler trying to get these lines in here, right? <laughs> we're just going to, you know, try to take our pen, go from our upright position where we're drawing, take the pen, drop it down like this. Maybe hold your pen a little more loosely and then just try to get your lines across here. Maybe you have to practice this type of thing, getting those lines straight like this. It does take a pra some practice. You have to practice this. This might be where you just take up four or five pieces of... Um, uh, printer paper and then just practice this technique of taking your pen holding it on like almost flat to the paper just a little bit up on an angle and then you just try to get some nice lines try to get them even going across the page and my hand is just sliding across the page while the pen's in my hand so basically if you, if you can imagine my hand is resting on the paper sliding on the paper and I'm just sliding my hand on the paper at the same time I'm putting those lines on if you try to do it with your hand lifted off the paper, it, it won't work as good. Work as good. You have to be almost with your hand resting on the paper and just sliding on the paper. So your hand is stabilized by resting on the paper and on your table. So it helps to work on a really good flat surface like a masonite board or a large clipboard or a table like a kitchen table or a dining room table or a stack tray or something, you know. Angle, an angle is nice too if you can have a little bit of an angle on your board when you work. That really helps a lot too. So, but that's how we do it. Like that. And then once we get these horizontal lines in for the, for the paper, the wallpaper, then we add some of the little darks here and there. Little spots of darks. And that makes it more exciting. It kind of tantalizes your eyes as you're looking at it and going, ooh, wow, look at those little dots. Those little bits of dark here and there. And you try to make them all different, not one the same. And there we have it. That looks pretty good. And again, we didn't take much more than 15, 20 minutes. I think my, my uh, video clock says 18 minutes and 30 seconds. So in 18 minutes and 30 seconds, we created this beautiful flower drawing with pen. Uh, we uh, started out the correct way to do this again is to try to scale it the same so you'll have an easier time drawing this if you just match this and then if we even wanted to measure this we can say all right well how big is the vase? We'll take our ruler, we'll take our ruler. You can use a ruler to scale these things too instead of using your pen or pencil you can use a ruler and then we could have just said well how how tall is this vase? Well it's two inches here. So then you would just come over here and say two inches. I went a little high. So mine's about two and a quarter inches. So I went a quarter inch higher than this one, but it's relatively close. That's acceptable. And then here, this is about an inch wide, the base here. So how did I do? Well, we got this one pretty good. One inch, one inch. So we got the same for the uh, bottom of the um, vase. We, cor we correctly got this about the same. This has a little more of an arch. This is a little bit of a softer arch there. Um, how about what width-wise on the vase up top? What is that? Inch and a quarter over here, inch and a quarter over here. So we did fine there. And then the flowers, of course, were more free-flowing, have a free 
fun, exciting, happy time doing your flowers. And as long as you're close to what this looks like, you'll be, you'll be good. You know, you want to keep it within the rectangle, of course, too. You want to be aware of your top border up here so that we're not drawing way out of this up here. But I think you can do this and do this efficiently. Have a fun time. And trust me, you'll do a good job at this. This I know is a, especially for those of you that love flowers. If you don't love flowers so much, please try them anyway. The reason I say that is because they're very fun and easy to do. Flowers are very curvy and they're irregular. So they're not that like critical. You can, you can kind of have fun with flowers when you draw them. You don't have to worry about getting everything so accurate. As long as you're close to the shapes, you'll be fine. Stems are fun and easy, you know, doing those vertical stems going up straight like that. Those are fun to do, easy. There's no real mystery to that, right? Just some straight lines up like that. So I'm hoping you're going to have a great time now as you go and work on this. I'm sorry about my lights are flickering. I have to figure that out. That's another problem I have to deal with all the time. When you're a YouTube creator, you have to worry about these things. I must figure out a way to stop these lights from flickering. I'm not sure what it is, why. Mm, probably the light fixture could be that. So I'll figure that out so that this doesn't distract us. Okay, so I'll work on that while I'm on my break. And then uh, we'll be back soon with another great video. We'll do some watercolors next. So we're just at the beginning of the weekend now and we're gonna go through the weekend. We're gonna get a couple more paintings done. We'll get an Extreme Beginners painting done and then we'll also get a regular, um, our advanced um, and beginners can work on the advanced paintings too as well. Okay, so we will see you soon. Thanks again for coming by. I always mention if you haven't subscribed, it's, the button's right down on the right-hand side here of the, of the screen. When you click the subscribe button, it really is a great thing. You'll always, you won't lose me on YouTube. You'll make sure you'll, um, you'll have, when you open up YouTube the next time, you'll just see that my newer videos will come up and you'll see those in your screen. So, um, and it won't take over your screen, but you will see at least one of my videos probably in your screen when you open up YouTube. Usually you'll see a dozen, maybe 10 or 12 videos when you open YouTube, you'll see one of at least mine, and then you'll know, oh, there's Chris again. I didn't lose him. I don't have to go f figure out what his name is again or, you know, or figure out what the name of the video was. It'll be right there. So it, all it does is help you keep a track of what I'm doing, and I'm hoping you'll stick with me every week and work here every week on my videos. I promise you, you'll get better and better at watercolor as you work with me. I'm covering all the fundamentals of watercolor, drawing and painting in watercolor. We do everything regarding subject matter. So everything is watercolor and we do figures, portrait work, landscapes, seascapes, boat paintings. We do architecture. We do birds, animals, we, you name it. We do everything here and cityscapes as well. All things we, we do here on this channel, everything watercolor. So you don't have to worry about searching around for other subject matter that you like. We'll do everything here for you. And all you have to do is just follow along each week and you'll just constantly, as you watch, you'll hear the same terms over and over again. And as you hear the same terms, the same terminology, the same definitions, and the same things we talk about over and over, you'll just catch on to it and it'll be second nature for you. After a while, maybe six months or a year of watching my videos, you will have learned a ton of brand new information on watercolor and it'll be already infused in your watercolor paintings and in your drawings so that everything looks better and it looks good and you'll be happier. If you don't get good results with my videos and my tutorials here on YouTube, then I'm doing something wrong. But a lot of people are sending in their pictures, their paintings, their drawings to me on email. And I'm just telling you a lot of people have made huge progress and are doing incredibly well and doing incredible drawings and paintings and watercolor. So. Uh, I realize other people are watching other artists too on YouTube, and I don't say just watch me. You figure out what artist you like to watch um, or which artist you like to study. But the thing is, I know that a lot of the people that have been following me along for the last four and five years have made a ton of progress and are making really incredible paintings by now. So I salute everybody out there that's been with me a long time, and you know who you are. <laughs> you send me in your paintings, and I'm confused. I can't tell if it's mine or yours which is a good thing because I'm not saying that I'm the greatest watercolor artist, but I feel like I've made a lot of progress over my time over the last 15 years. And if people are doing the same quality paintings as I'm doing, that means they're really getting, you know, some really good uh, learning and growing on my channel. So I stand behind what I do and I'm hoping you're going to have fun and stick with me and we'll 
we'll learn all this watercolor stuff, okay? We'll see you soon.